So uh, just to quickly walk through what we're going to be covering today, um, we're going to walk through conditional pronouns. So um, he, she, they, for example, uh, we're also going to be walking through conditional line items. So for example, having one, two, or three um, different line items in a, in a location in the document. Um, we're also going to be going through optional text. So having an entire paragraph or an entire line swap in and out and be excluded or included. Finally, we'll go through simple view and hide, hiding or, or abstracting these conditionals in a, um, in a form or in a template so that they're a little less confusing. And then finally, we'll just go through uh, any of uh, the additional sort of supplementary training resources that are available for working with conditionals. Okay, so with that, Let's hop right into it. Um, so we have here a simple answer to complaint document, um, obviously with Woodpecker over here on the right. And the first thing that we want to cover is um, the conditional uh, possessive pronoun um, use case that I just mentioned. So you can see that obviously I've got a plaintiff name field here. I also have created a uh, defendant's gender name or a uh, field here. And this defendant's gender field is just a simple uh, single select field with three options, male, female, and other. Um, to set this up, let's just take a quick peek at what that looks like. Essentially, I've created a field called defendant's gender with a type as single select and specified three different options. What I then have done is created a conditional field and again, to create a new field, you're just going to click on create a field there. And that's going to bring up a, uh, a, a pop-up that looks a lot like this. So let's actually take a look at the conditional that I set up for the defendant's possessive pronoun field. I'm going to click edit, and you can see that here we've got our standard conditional. So the way that conditionals are laid out is that there's several of these blue boxes, uh, if you will, when you, when you create a conditional field. Each blue box is a self-contained uh, condition. And the self-contained conditions, you can have as many of them as you want in, um, in, in this larger conditional field. And the way they get evaluated is top down. So the conditional will first, the conditional field will first check if this first condition uh, evaluates to true. If it does not, meaning it evaluates to false, it will then move down to the next one and check if this condition evaluates to true. If that also does evaluates to false, we'll finally end up down at this if conditions are not met section, where we have the option to, to set a default value for the conditional field or to exclude the field entirely. So we're gonna get into what that looks like here um, in, in a second in both of those options. But before we do, I just wanna quickly walk through what I set up here. So we can, um, actually before I do that, to add additional of these uh, blue boxes or these blue conditions, we can just click on add a condition here and that's gonna give us another blue box. Pretty simple. So the way that I set this up to have this be a conditional uh, possessive pronoun that's dependent on the defendant's gender is in my first blue box, I've got an if section and I've got a then section. Underneath the if, I've got a drop down, And if I click on this drop down, I'm gonna get a list of all of the fields that I've created thus far. Obviously, in this case, we want defendant's gender. We then have a list of what we call operators or uh, ways that we can compare the value of defendant's gender to something else. Um, so in this case, I want to select equals because I want to say if the defendant's gender equals male, then the possessive pronoun should be his. We could also use does not equal, greater than, less than, is empty, all of this good, all the good stuff here. So what I want to do is I want to say if the defendant's gender equals, and then I'm going to get a drop down that's going to give me the options that are available in the defendant's gender field. Now, if the field we were using is our comparison, uh, say we were using state capitalized state, for example, if we were using one of those fields that was not a single select or not a drop down. This box here would actually just be an input box that we could type in um, some value to compare. But in this case, because defendant's gender is a dropdown, it's going to give us a list of the available options. So next, I'm going to say, okay, well, if the defendant's gender equals male, then this uh, possessive pronoun should be his. So I've just actually typed out his in this uh, in this then box here. We'll cover a little bit more of the different uh, then box types we can use. Over on the right here, there's a drop down that's going to allow us to select the um, different then box types we could use. Of course, right now we're just using a single line text uh, then box type. We could also have multi line text, rich text, and input, uh, which we'll cover later. But for now, this, uh, this is simple enough. This is all we want to do. Defendant's gender is male, then the pronoun should be his. We'll move down to this next one and say the same thing. If the defendant's gender is female, 
then the possessive pronoun should be uh, hers. And finally, we'll say that if the conditions are not met, meaning the defendant's gender is not male and is not female, then we might want to say theirs. So after we've set this up, once we click save, our uh, conditional field is right here. And depending on what we select for the defendant's gender, whether it's male, female, or other, you can see that the defendant's possessive pronoun field here is going to adjust accordingly. Okay, so that's that's a basic use case for how to actually set up um, how to actually set up the uh, conditional that has uh, uh, conditional possessive pronouns. Now, the second piece that we would want to do is we would actually want to insert this defendant's possessive pronoun in the document. I've already done uh, done this, um, but basically, you can see that this field is being used four times in the document. And what we would want to do is we would probably want to say, okay, well, I can either go through the doc and look for every occurrence of her uh, or every occurrence of his or whatever it is. Um, but instead, what I would probably want to do is click on this down arrow here, select bulk insert and say, okay, well, look for every occurrence of the word her and insert this defendant's possessive pronoun at each occurrence of her, which of course I've already done. Now, if I were to change this to, let's say, other, you can see it says theirs. If I now populate, this defendant's possessive pronoun, again, is being used four times, and we should see that right here, for example, there's one instance. Each of these instances should update to theirs. Okay, so again, if anyone has any questions as we go along, please feel free to put those in the chat. You can directly, uh, directly message me uh, privately if you like, and, um, and we'll cover those as they come up. So the second uh, use case of the conditional that we want to get into is the um, dynamic or conditional number of line items use case. So in this case, what I've done is I've, as I've again set up a drop down here um, that's called number of answers, right? So in this case, it's basically the number of answers that I'm going to provide in this answer to complaint uh, under this answer section. And my number of answers has three options, one, two, or three. Again, it's just a drop down field. If we go in and edit, you can see what it looks like. It's a single select with three options, one, two, and three. Pretty standard. What I've also done though, is I've set up an answers field that is a conditional. So if we go in and edit this, we, so we can see what's under the hood here. Again, it's a conditional field and we've got our blue boxes. And I basically said that if the number of answers equals one, then I wanna have one line item that references a field called first answer, which we'll get to here in a second. Same thing for number of answers equals two. I wanna have two line items where I have uh, each one referencing first answer or second answer. And finally, number if the number of answers equals three, we have three line items. Now, what's important to know here is that when we were looking at the then, uh, the, the then input type, over here on the right, right now we've selected multi-line text. So this then input type, ultimately reflects whatever uh, type of text that your conditional will ultimately evaluate to. So if we pop back out here, just so we can show you what this looks like, you can see that obviously this is a, this is a multi-line text uh, field here, whereas this one here, this conditional is just a single line of text. Now, multi-line text allows you to do all sorts of fancy things like maintain uh, words native styling, as well as have obviously multiple lines of text. Um, but in this case, we're just doing it so that we could have uh, multiple line items in the same uh, the same woodpecker field. So if we pop back down over here, I'm just going to change the number of answers to two. You can see that that snaps into place to have that second line item, three, that third line item. Now, what's important here uh, to know is that as the sort of third piece is that this uh, these these references to other fields. These are what we call macros, and basically a macro is just a name of another field you've created. Uh, that is surrounded by curly braces and that tells Woodpecker go look for a field called first answer and pull that value into this uh, into this field itself. So if we look in here for first answer, you can see it's right here. If I type in test here and then maybe also second answer, actually here, let's do two for the number of answers. We can see that my first answer is test, my second answer is test, and my third answer ultimately has become blank. Um, this is a good use case for the conditional input then type, which we're going to cover here in a second. But if I populate this, what we should see is right down here uh, for, our, uh, for our answers, we now have first test, second test. Uh, if we change this to just one and click populate, we'll just have that one line item of first test. 
pretty simple. So if anyone has any questions on how to set up conditional multiple multi lines or conditional line items, again, please feel free to ask. Um, but that's sort of a basic use case of, uh, of having conditionally multiple lines in a section of the document. Now, the third piece here is let's say we wanted to um, include or exclude a certain uh, section of the document or a certain sentence. In this case, this CC. Now, there's a, a nice feature here where if we click on the down arrow, we can actually click on show instances. And this is going to go and highlight and take us to the instance or the one instance in this case of this field as it's used in the document. So you can see here's my, my CC at the bottom, but maybe I want to be able to toggle whether this is included or not. So if I choose include CC as no, you can see that it now becomes excluded. If I choose yes, it's included. So if we click no here and we click populate, we should expect that that actually should get removed from the document entirely. And it will here in just a second. So this is a way to actually have content get added and removed from various parts of the document as a conditional. So the way that we set this up, let's just dive into it a little bit. If we just click edit on that conditional here, we can see that we basically said, okay, well, if include CC, is that, which is that field that we just created that's a drop down with two answers, yes and no, equals yes, then we would like to include uh, this text. And you can see that we're also using a macro here. And the way to actually easily insert macros into uh, you know, any field is there's this little icon that shows up on a lot of the, a lot of the fields in Woodpecker. So if you click on it, you're going to get a list of all of your clauses in your cause library, which we do cover in a separate training session, as well as a list of every field that you've created. So in this case, I've just clicked on attorney for plaintiff, or you know, let's try another one. Let's say uh, number of answers, for example, and it's going to insert a reference to that field directly wherever I uh, wherever I'm, I'm I'm working. And in this case, of course, I just chose attorney for plaintiff, which Woodpecker will now go and look for a attorney for plaintiff field and pull that value into here. Now the the adding and removing of this field from the doc basically comes from this exclusion piece. So basically we say, okay, if the include CC equals yes, then include this sentence. But if include CC does not equal yes, meaning it's no, then we're gonna end up down at this bottom part where if conditions are not met, we either want to exclude the field or set a default value. And in this case, we're excluding the field. And so what excluding the field means is that this, this, uh, this field actually will get removed from the document, right? So you can see it's, it, there's nothing there. Um, but Woodpecker is smart enough to actually keep track of where this field uh, went so that if we do include it again and we click populate, this will now get added back to where it was previously. Um, so this is a really nice way to be able to add and remove, you know, anything from an entire paragraph to uh, entire pages to even just a single simple sentence. Okay, and the last piece here I want to cover is the um, is these first, second, and third answers here that we talked about a little bit earlier. So uh, I'm going to use um, these uh, six little dots over here on the left of a woodpecker field. If I just click and drag those, I can actually rearrange uh, a field or rearrange the fields however I like. Um, and I'm just going to move this number of answers down next to each of these. So you can see that if I chose one, two, or three here, these first, second, and third answers sort of light up or get grayed out, depending on, um, on, on what I've selected here. So these, these first, second, and third answers are actually all conditional fields themselves, as you can tell by the little curly brace icon next to each one of them. So if I pop into the first one, let's just take a look at what that looks like. Basically, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. What I've said is, okay, if the number of answers is greater than zero, and the reason we did that greater than instead of equal to one, say, is we want first answer to become an input, which if you look over here, you can see we selected input here. That's why there's no, there's no box for then, right? If we select single line text as a box, but if we choose input, there's no box. Um, an input here in this case actually means that we're, we would like to prompt the user or prompt the consumer of the template to give us a value for first answer, right? So we would like this conditional field to turn into an input if this condition evaluates to true. So again, the reason that we set up this number of answers as greater than zero is because we want first answer to become an input box if the number of answers is one, two, three, four, five, 
anything greater uh, than zero because, of course, if we selected number of answers as three, we would like to see first answer as an input. So that's the reason we set it up as greater than. Sometimes that's a little confusing for folks. Uh, so that's the way that each of these are set up. So if we take a look at the second answer here, you can see that if it, it says if number of answers is greater than one, right, we show the second answer, meaning if number of answers is equal to one, we're not going to show the second answer as an input. But if it's two, three, four, or five, we do. So the third answer is set up exactly the same way. Now, when I say show and not show, what I'm really saying is whether these be whether these are excluded or not. Now, of course, if we select number of answers equal to one, and we have our first answer here as an input, these two are now irrelevant, and we don't necessarily need to see them. So this brings me to the final thing we were going to cover today, which is simple view. So if I come over to the menu here, and I click on settings, there's a setting called simple view here which is going to allow us to basically hide any fields that requ that don't require user input so that's conditional fields um, formula fields excluded fields uh, anything again that doesn't require user input because it's automatically calculated so again now if we come back here we can see my simple view i have a little simple view setting at the top here that's indicating that simple view is on and that 10 fields are being hidden in the in the form here so if we scroll down we can see that next to a uh, number of answers we've got our first answer but we don't see second or third because they're irrelevant we don't actually need the user to uh, we don't need to prompt the user for that information however if we change number of answers to two you can see now we got our second answer number of answers to three we've got our third and if we put it back to one we've got only one now what's great about this is that having simple view on allows us to, of course, simplify the, the, form, uh, the form here a little bit, as well as if I'm sharing this with someone, they don't need to know, they don't need to worry about what goes on underneath the hood. They just have to worry about filling out, you know, the right options here, which will appear and disappear depending on what we need them to do. Um, and they don't have to worry about anything else, right? Or even we don't have to worry about anything else uh, that's operating underneath, uh, underneath SimpleView. Um, so that, uh, any, I know that's a lot, but any questions on that, again, please feel free to put into the chat and we can dive into, uh, into anything that uh, anyone's curious about. So just to quickly recap on, um, on how this is all working here with the, um, the then input box. Basically what we're doing is we have a number of answers drop down. It's with one, two, and three. These first, second, and third answer fields are being included or excluded depending on what we've selected for this. Because we have our sort of under the hood view on right now, we're seeing the fields even if they are excluded. If we turn simple view on, we won't see them if they're excluded. Um, and then finally, in our in our answers box here, we're actually pulling in uh, the value of first answer and second answer um, depending on the uh, number of answers that is selected. So again, if we were to change this to one, this now will only have one answer as a line item, and we'll re reference that first answer field that we prompted to enter a value for.